Welcome to today's 3D print. One of my viewers had a vase mode question, so I am going to try to answer that question today. So they were printing a rocket fin can, kind of like this, and they had a problem where the they were printing the fin can upside down so that the leading edge would be nice and clean, um, or for whatever reason they needed to print it upside down. And the trailing edge looks like um, it's either... It's some kind of shaped trailing edge, but it wasn't closing. It looked kind of like that, where the trailing edge was open for whatever reason. And there's two reasons that's going to happen. Either your trailing edge is too thick, the trailing edge meaning the final edge of the model. Either your trailing edge is too thick, and so of course if you print that in vase mode, it's only going to print the outer wall, and it's going to be open and hollow like this. This can also happen sometimes, not always, but sometimes, if your trailing edge is too thin. Because if you're, it all depends on the, the angle of the trailing edge. Um, interestingly enough, a nice sharp trailing edge that has a tilt will usually print okay. I, I actually usually print pretty nicely. But if that trailing edge comes to a, 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 a flat point where the trailing edge is parallel to your print bed, that can be a problem if it's too thin. If it's too thick, you'll have a gap. If it's too thin, the slicer might erase part of the trailing edge, thinking it's too thin to print. And so you're going to get an uneven trailing edge that's going to be moved down as the slicer ignores the portion that's too thick. And if it erases too much, you might again end up with too thick a trailing edge. And so when it prints the outer perimeter, you end up with a gap. I'm going to show you how to fix that. If you um, are designing the model yourself, that's easy to fix. Just make sure your trailing edge is at least 0.8 millimeters thick, or two times your nozzle diameter. So this is assuming a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. If you're using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, for example, that'll need to be 1.2 millimeters. So 0.6 times 2. In our case, 0.4 times 8 would be 0.8 millimeters. So let's switch over to Tinkercad, where I have a model set up to show you this. So we switch this here, and there we go. Okay, so here we have Tinkercad. And let me make this full screen so we can see more. There we go, and get rid of this. So here we have a model, and I have both examples of a problem. So I have this example of an edge that is really thin, and I have this example of an edge that is too thick. The way we are going to address that is um, using Tinkercad. You can, again, if you model this in your own software, you can handle this in your software. But if you're using a FinCan you downloaded off Thingiverse, bring it into Tinkercad. If the FinCan is too complex, has too many triangles or glitches when you bring it in, uh, load the file into Prusa Slicer first, and then right-click on the model in the Prusa Slicer and click Simplify. Just select high, hit OK, and then export as an STL. That will simplify the triangles in the model and allow you to bring it into Tinkercad, and you won't be able to tell the difference in most cases. So what I did here was we added in that. It was not supposed to move, so I must have moved it at some point. There we go. Okay. Um, what I did was I brought in two squares, and I made those squares the size of um, the fin, the length of the fin, the height is arbitrary, and the thickness, as you see here, is 0 0.8 millimeters thick. So for the fin that is a sharp edge, what we need to do is to make that fin not a sharp edge. We need to make this fin as wide as 0 0.8 millimeters. This is actually pretty easy. I use the align function. I aligned my cube with the end of the fin. I centered it on the fin, and then I made it the same width as the fin. Then all we're going to do is invert it. So we're going to grab this and just invert it. And we're going to keep dragging down until our cube disappears inside the fin. Then keep dragging it a little further. So you can see what we have here. I have this cube that is centered on the edge of the fin here. And then we just dragged it so that it's well within the model. Okay. And now we just take and merge those two pieces together. And you end up now with a trailing edge that is 0.8 millimeters thick. 
Now what you can also do is you can add a triangle here to make this edge instead of having it you know angle in and then go straight you could have this thin um, um, angle from here to this edge here you can model that yourself but that's something we're going to do similar in the next step so that will take care of that this will now print as one single loop which should fuse together so you won't have a hole and it has enough material that it can complete a single vase mode loop so a single vase mode loop would be, you know, one loop around like that. You know, it's got a left side and a right side, but because it's 0 0.8 millimeters, those two sides should fuse together. So it's a valid vase mode path that should not result in a gap. Now, if you have the other situation where the fin is too thick, so you have too much material. So this is the case here. Our fin is a flat trailing edge, and we need this trailing edge to be this big. Okay, that's because if you try to print that, you're going to get something more like this. You're going to get something with a gap, and you're going to have an opening in the middle of your fin. And we need to close that opening. So again, we put our cube down, we align it with the trailing edge here, and we make it exactly as wide as the fin, which I already have set up here. It's 0 0.8 millimeters thick, and it's centered. So that is our diagram basically of what we have to do the way we're going to fix this is by using another shape so we're going to grab this little 90 degree shape here and we're going to place it on this edge and we're going to rotate it 180 degrees so it's facing down uh no not like that um how did i want to do that oh okay i'm sorry so like that and then 180 this way, I think. Yes. So you need to face like this. So now we have that edge there. I'll show you what we're going to do with that in a moment. First thing we need to do is make it just the same width as this. So this is 73.78. So 73.78. And we are going to align it with the edge. So grab all the parts, align, and we're going to pick the corner here. So now these are all aligned with the edge. We need to duplicate this part now. So I select it, hit Control D. What is this, 20 wide? So we're just going to invert it and make it 20 wide on this side. But we do need to make sure, well, actually, that doesn't matter all that much but yet yeah, it is going to be important um this needs to be on this plane so we're going to take our work plane and we're going to put it here on the other side of our 0 0.8 millimeter face and then we're going to lift this until it's zero um where does that need to go i forget which one it is um it's going to be close to zero. It's going to be this one. Zero. There we go. So now this one's even with this edge. This one over here is even with that edge over there. So now we have our two proper length aligned centered cornered pieces. What we're going to do is we're going to take these two pieces and we're going to join them together into one piece. We're going to turn them into a hole. And now what we're going to do is we are going to align, let's put the work plane back where it belongs on the bottom. Now we're going to select just our little cut piece here and the fin can. This only works if your fin can is totally flat at the rear edge, which this one is. If it's not, you'll have to tweak this. And we're going to align, shift, select this piece so it doesn't move, and we're going to align this way. What that did now we've brought this piece here even with the edge of the fin we actually don't need this anymore the result you'll see is if we were to cut this this fin would have an angle and then this edge here would be 0 0.8 millimeters thick which is enough for a proper vase mode circuit without giving you a gap this angle is, i think this is 45 degrees which should work 
but that's a little bit steep. I like to be 60 or greater. Um, so you can adjust this. Just grab your piece here, come down here to the bottom, and then just make it taller. See? See how the angle's increasing? So we just keep dragging this until we get the angle we want. And with a fin, you want a pretty decent angle. So we're going to go all the way down like that. That's a nice angle for a trailing edge. And I can drag that even further if I want to make a smoother trailing edge. And the more you drag it, the better it's going to be. Um, that's a nice wedge. There we go. And so it's only going to cut away the material necessary to get us from here to here. And that's it. Now we merge that. And now we have our new trailing edge, which is not quite right. Okay, can we fix that? Probably just by making this a hair taller. So what are we now? We are at 166.2. So if I make this 166.21, that'll probably be enough to make sure it gets rid of that top little edge piece there. There we go. If you, if you end up what I had there, you end up with that little flat cap on the top, just make your cut tool 0.01 polar, and that'll make sure it gets rid of that little that little cap that we had appearing on top of there. That's a little Tinkercad glitch. It's, it's easy to fix. It's just annoying. So now we have a, a chiseled trailing edge or airfoil to trailing edge. You can go as complex as you want with this. You can curve it if you can design the part. You can do that if you want. Um, uh, for example, you could put, you know, a, a half moon on the edge of this, and you know, you could start. You can get very complex with this if you want. Let me give you a real quick rundown here. Let's go 90 degrees this way, and then 90 degrees this way. So, for example, I could do something like this. There we go. I could do something like that. Really? You gonna get in my way? You know, I can create a, a curved shape like this. And then I can lop off the end of that curved shape with a cut tool like this. There we go. That gets me my curved shape. And then um that's too thick, obviously, so we're going to have to thin that down. Like that. The, you can, and then what you could do is you could put a flat box on the end of the fin and use this curve as a cut tool out of the box and then use that box that now has the cut in it to cut the shape of the fin. This is one of the ways that you can add an airfoil to a fin and then you duplicate that and reverse it on the other side. I'm choosing to do a simple wedge fin here like you see it's just a whole lot easier um, but now this fin will print correctly either one either the one that we added thickness to like this because the, the wedge was too sharp it came to too tight an edge or by cutting away a part of the fin because it was too thick to give us our little wedge shaped trailing edge and now this dimension here is 0 0.8 millimeters thick which will correctly print in vase mode but that's the two ways you can fix that problem when you're trying to print a vase mode fin can for a model rocket but you're not getting a proper print in vase mode for whatever reason and let's switch back to OBS and that's it so that's what I did on this one for example this trailing edge is 0 0.8 millimeters thick so you see it's actually slightly flat, which is actually a flat edge there. And that flat edge is exactly two times the nozzle diameter. So that is 0 0.8 millimeters thick. So it can complete one single loop, but that loop is closed and fused. Um, I printed this one this way, of course, and that's a failed print. But um, you can see I did the same thing on this one here. I just created these chiseled cutouts to give me my shape to my fin. 
that I have my cuts to give me some stiffness along the fin. But that's all there is to it. Not too, not, not too hard. Once you figure that out, it's, it's relatively easy. Um, if you do a good job of keeping your fin symmetrical so that it is centered properly um, to duplicate those parts. So once you create that wedge here, um, what you can do is duplicate the wedge, merge it with the fin, and now you're going to still have a duplicate. Okay? You can then rotate, assuming your fin is correctly centered, you can then rotate this 90 degrees, duplicate your cut tool again, and then merge it, one of those copies with the fin, then rotate again, duplicate your cut tool again, merge the copy with the fin, and then rotate the fin again, and merge your final copy. Um, and that will allow you to do all fins and keep it symmetrical. Um, so you don't, you don't have to repeat all that work over and over again. But again, that only works if your fin is symmetrical and will rotate cleanly. As long as your part is the same dimension this way and this way, and as long as the center point of your four fins is the same as the center point of the cylinder in the middle, that's not always the case. So you may have to do little micro adjustments. Um, and again, if you cut a section and you end up with a flat cap on the top of that section, go back a step, grab your cut tool, and just make it 0 0.01 millimeters taller. So you saw mine was 166.2, so I made it 166.21, and that'll be just enough to get rid of that little flashing cap that Tinkercad sometimes does when it improperly cuts parts. Um, that's it. If you have any questions, ask down below. And why won't the mouse work? There it goes.